Hello and welcome back to Curve Stomp City and another episode of ECW Lives on TEW 2016. And today we're bringing you another episode of ECW Revolt and this is the first one back in America since our mini tour of Japan. And we're opening with a contract negotiation with Mephisto, who you might recognize from the Super Lucha event back in July. And they got a decent rating, 56. And I was looking through the filters and the search, and he came up from what I searched for. And he seems to fit the bill. He's got strong chain wrestling, strong aerials. Popularity in the Tri-State is 33, so that's decent as well. But it's a one appearance deal for three months. So once he's had the appearance, we'll look at how he's done and then we can go back in with another offer. We are also going to offer the same contract to Gangrel. And I quite like Gangrel. Um, but we're going to have to see how he gets on. But yeah, one appearance just to, just to evaluate him. We've also got a couple of other TV deals running out. So the two Japan deals are running out. So we're going to have to fix that. Maybe even try and get a better time slot with them. So we're going to do late evening. So that's the same expectation as what Bravo want. So we may as well do it since that's what we're expected anyway. So we're going to go to late evening. So our TV rating should get much better. Um, we're also going to do the same for Sapporo TV. Globecast TV is also running out, so we need to renegotiate with that. We can't get prime time on this one, so we're going to have to leave it at late evenings. Um, we might as well negotiate it while we're here. We'll go six months with this one. And we're just going to rename Gangrel Gangrel, as I believe that's his legal name now. I think he owns the rights to the name. I've also just noticed that Samoa Joe has bulked up and he is now officially a heavyweight. So yeah, that's a pretty cool thing to happen. And before the show, we have some locker room incidents, one with Hoover to Guerrera. He turned up late. So we're going to fine him and he's improved his behavior and he is happy at the action. AJ was brought to wrestlers court, accused of against shaking of a hot worker's hand and found him guilty of uh, sentences to buy drinks. We've seen that one millions of times. And a different one. Super Dolphin was brought before wrestlers court accused of moaning about stuff all the time and bumming everyone else out. Um, he's sentenced to shut up or cheer up and to buy drinks for everyone after the show. So yeah, fair enough. And he's improved his behavior as a result. So we're back in New York on Staten Island. So we begin the show with AJ Styles entering the arena and he asks for Paul Heyman to enter the ring. And he says, Paul, last week I pinned one half of the tag team champions in that six man tag. And I want you to give me a shot at the belts. And Paul says, OK, AJ, that seems fair. You get your shot if you beat the former tag team champion Steen Incredible later tonight. Find yourself a partner. So yeah, that's one of the matches booked for tonight. 55 C minus for that promo. And then a video airs showing Joey Styles interviewing Samoa Joe recorded earlier in the week. And Joey says, Joe, last week on Revolt, we saw you make a huge statement. You ended the night with three belts in your possession. What are your plans for the future? And then Joey says, my plans are quite simple. I've been training every single day to become the best this business has to offer. My goal is to take down Rhino. He has been the ECW World Heavyweight Champion for nine months now. He also holds the coveted GPWC World Heavyweight Championship. He claims to be the undisputed champion, yet he forgets about the belt that I hold. I have been the most dominant television champion in history, and I want my shot at his belts, and I want to hold all three championships. And then Joey says, that's a huge mountain to climb and that would make ECW history. So Joe's intentions are clear, and he wants Rhino's belts, and he wants to become a triple champion. So that would be huge. 
and something we haven't seen before. And 60C for that promo. And then in a terrible match, uh, Monsuta defeated Roadkill in four minutes. So they've got a 28E, this is not good. And yeah, the crowd in New York don't like Monsuta either, so we're going to have to rethink him. Um, he got a 17, Roadkill got a 38, so Roadkill actually did better. Roadkill was brought in just on a local worker deal, just as a jobber. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to think about Monsuta's future. Um, so yeah, 28E, not great. And then a video airs saying Vampiro returns tonight. And that got a 67C plus, so he's back from his suspension. And then in about that had decent wrestling, but little heat. AJ Styles and Devitt. So he's picked Devitt as his partner who was in the six-man tag last week. And they've defeated Steen Incredible in 8 minutes 28 when Fergal Devitt defeated Kevin Steen by pinfall with a fast roll-up. Fergal got a 43, Styles got a 63. Steen got a 48, Incredible got a 64. Yeah, this is going to help get Deva over, teaming with AJ. And this got a 60C, so that's a good match. And then Paul Heyman is in the ring, ready to make an announcement. And Paul says, you've all seen the interview with Samoa Joe, and I would like to address it. Samoa Joe and Rhino have become the most dominant wrestlers in this business, and the idea of having this match really excites me. Therefore, in three weeks' time at Anarchy Rules, we will see three championships on the line in one match. ECW television champion Samoa Joe will take on the undisputed ECW GPWC World Heavyweight Champion Rhino to find out who is the true champion of the world. And then Heyman turns around to exit the ring and Rhino is stood behind him and he goes straight through Heyman. And then Samoa Joe runs down the ramp and drops his title whilst running. And then Rhino escapes the ring and runs up the ramp, grabbing the television championship on his way. So that got a 68C plus, so a good segment. And then Vampiro, on his return match, defeats John Cena in 9 minutes 40 by pinfall with a choke slam. And they don't seem to click, apparently. Vampiro got a 61, which is good. John Cena got a 39 and 58C minus altogether. And then in the main event, in a decent match, Samoa Joe defeats Jeff Jarrett in 9 minutes 35 by submission with a dragon sleeper. Jarrett got a 54, Joe got a 72. And yes, 67C plus in the main event. So that's just to give Joe a win and to keep him strong going into the future. And then the show ends there. And so we end with a 65C. So we've met the requirements of the network, or the new requirements, and we've increased our popularity in 20 regions. So we haven't actually gone up in Tri-State, but everywhere else we have. So that's good. And the TV rating, since we've got better time slots, has gone up to 1.76, so that's brilliant. Um, the new TV deals are really helping. So we've got a better TV slot in Bravo and in both channels in Japan as well. So yeah, that's good. So that's a record for our TV. So we're just going to check Fergal Devitt's popularity once more. We'll keep a close eye on this. So it's gone up to 16 in the USA, 14 in Canada, British Isles in Scotland is 14. And in Japan, it varies um, from 17 to 6. So, yeah, he's progressing well again. We're just going to auto push and see where he is now. And he's still opener, unfortunately. But hopefully, after a few matches teaming with AJ and putting on some good matches with him, we should see him go up to at least the mid card pretty soon. So, yeah, that's the main goal at the minute. Well, one of the main goals is to get Fergal Devitt to one of the top positions in, on the card. We've got to build it up slowly. We can't, obviously can't just push him in the main event with his popularity as it is. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. And if you have, hit the like button and subscribe for more TEW 2016 and general wrestling content. And until next time, peace.